Well, soil health is basically a soil that's in good condition. Um, if you're a farmer or grazier in the Holbrook district, then basically you're managing soil. It's a key asset in your farm business. Uh, and just like your fencing, your roads, your infrastructure, your machinery, um, soils are an asset for you. And you need to keep them in working order or good condition for them to be productive and profitable in the long term. When your soil asset is in good condition, it will capture more water from your annual rainfall. It will cycle the nutrients that you're using, whether they be from your soil type or added in fertilizer. It will cycle them more effectively for you and you'll get better fertilizer efficiency. And you'll minimize soil-borne diseases like nematode damage or fungal rots in plants. So having a soil in good condition really impacts on yield potential in your business and therefore profit at the end of the day. Yeah, so basically there's three aspects to the health of your soil. Um, there's the physical component of your soil or the soil structure. There's the chemical component of your soil, um, so key chemical aspects that need to be in balance. And then there's the biological aspect of your soil. And this soil has a whole community of life in it that needs to be in balance for that soil to work well. So a key component of soil health is its physical aspects and, and here we've got a little bit of topsoil that I've dug out of the ground and you can see that the soil has what we call a certain structure and a structure are these physical parts of the soil which we call aggregates and the pore space or the air spaces between them. So a healthy soil has a good structure, it has a balance of different pores in the soil and a different range or different sizes of the aggregates between those pores and those two things together make soil structure, pores and aggregates. And a healthy soil has really good porosity and a really good mix of different aggregates to a decent depth into your soil. So soil structure is really important for your soil health um, because it helps improve your water management. When rain falls, it hits the ground and it can go into your soil if you've got lots of pores there. So your infiltration rate of rainfall can be really, really much higher when I have good porosity in my soil. If I have good aggregation or those small crumbs in my soil, if that's really well developed, then I actually hold on to more of the water that falls on my paddock and that leads to more plant available water. So basically, without soil structure, you're not gonna maximize the annual rainfall that you're getting on a paddock. So when it comes to soil health, there's a couple of really important chemical aspects of your soil that need to be in balance for that soil to function well. Uh, the big ones are pH and sometimes exchangeable aluminium, which is associated with your pH, soil salinity and soil sodicity. We need to keep our pH in a reasonable range for soil function and nutrient cycling. And sometimes the exchangeable aluminium gets too high in association with that as soil acidity and that can really disrupt your soil health. The second challenge we have is to not have too much soil salinity, which is a problem in some paddocks. And finally, in some soil types, you get high sodium in your clay and that can really disrupt soil function as well. We call that soil sodicity. When people are managing their soils, they often focus in on the nutrients like phosphorus and sulfur, which are really important for pasture production here in the Holbrook district. But it's also important to manage soil health and soil health is a separate management task to managing soil nutrients. If my soil has poor structure or imbalanced chemistry or the roots aren't growing well into the soil, then managing the nutrients is always going to be problematic. I won't get efficient use of my fertilizers. So soil health is pretty much looking after the condition of my asset and soil fertility is pretty much driving the production. It's a little bit like fuel in the tank of a vehicle, but I still need to look after the vehicle if I want it to go well. And that's really what soil health management is. There's a number of aspects of soil biology that are really important for your soil's health. This soil here that I'm holding has millions and millions of microbes, so bacteria and fungi around the roots of the plant. And so the soil microbes are a key component of any topsoil and they're really important for soil health. 
This soil that I'm holding also has a whole range of soil insects or invertebrates, which are larger than the microbes, moving and living in this soil. And they're a critical aspect of soil biology in your soil. And the third component of your soil biology are actually the plant roots themselves. So the plants and their roots are part of that biological community in your topsoil. And a balanced, healthy soil has a really good balance and diversity of microbes, soil invertebrates and plant roots, all functioning together with the minerals, the air and the water. <laughs>